Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Dan Novak. This program is aimed at English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. Coming up on the program, Katie Weaver has a story on a lake in Iraq that has dried up. Ana Mateo has this week's words and their stories on the expression full steam ahead. Dan Friedel and Faith Perlo bring us a story on foreign athletes in US colleges for this weekend's higher education report. Gregory Stockel reports on how gardeners can control harmful insects and protect helpful ones. And I return for a story on new research about our galaxy's stars. But first, this year, for the first time in its long history, Iraq's Lake Sawa dried up. This lake was known as the Pearl of the South, said 35-year-old Al-Akuli, who lives in Samawa, near the lake. Now it is our tragedy. A combination of bad ownership by local investors, government neglect, and climate change has turned Lake Sawa into a salty, flat area. The loss of Lake Sawa is only the latest addition to Iraq's water shortage. Experts say it is caused by climate change. Iraq has had drought and record low rainfall for years. The importance of water is driving up competition among businessmen and farmers. The poorest Iraqis are affected the most by the disaster. The narrow stretch of farmland along the Euphrates River is surrounded by desert. The area was ignored by the government starting in the 1980s. Locals call the area surrounding Lake Sawa Hachan, meaning thirsty in Arabic. Formed over rock, the lake has no path for water to move in or out. For a long time, nobody knew where the lake's water came from. Locals tell stories about how the water came to be in the lake. It is now known that the water comes from underground through a system of holes and breaks in rock. Rain from nearby valleys also feeds into the lake. Lots of rain can cause flooding. The lake sits five meters above sea level. It is about 1.8 kilometers long. Laith Ali al Obeidi is an environmental activist in southern Iraq. The degradation of the water began over 10 years ago, but this summer was the first time we lost the entire wetland, he said. Experts say the lake has not dried up permanently. They say its disappearance this year is because of thousands of illegal wells. Businessmen in nearby factories dig the wells because they cannot get enough water. Some water began to come back into the lake by early June. That was when the harvest season ended, meaning farmers did not need as much water. Aoun Diab is an advisor to the Water Resources Ministry. He said that closing illegal wells would have helped heal Lake Sawa. 
these would directly affect the economic interests of local officials. The problem is not only affecting humans, but other animals as well. Lake Sawa is a complex ecosystem. Sawa was filled with fish that were food for different kinds of birds. When the lake dried up, the fish died. Now the birds will have to find other food. Lake Sawa is a case study for climate change in Iraq, Al Obeidi said. This is the future. I'm Katie Weaver. On this program, we explore words and expressions in the English language. Today, we talk about steam. Steam is water heated to the boiling point. Above 100 degrees Celsius, water becomes a gas. When placed under pressure, steam can supply energy for heating, cooking, or mechanical work, as in a steam engine. Steam can mean other things too. It can be used to mean anger or to describe someone who is angry. For example, it is not healthy to get steamed over every little issue. Life is too short. Every time a friend of mine receives criticism, she gets steamed for a while. When I learned this about her, I knew to give her time and space to calm down after giving her any suggestions. Steam can also mean energy, active force, or motivation. This kind of steam is good for getting things done. For example, I once led a large group of people in a big creative project. I knew we needed to work up steam to get the job done. In other words, we would need a lot of energy. I told the team what was needed. I wanted to encourage them to get started. So I said to them, full steam ahead. But it is also easy to lose steam if you don't plan well. Once I started a project in the spring, but by summer... I had run out of steam. I did not have the energy or motivation to finish. Steam can also mean suppressed emotional tension or frustrations. Life can be busy and full of frustrations and problems. If we don't talk about them, pressure can build up inside us like a volcano that is ready to blow its top. When we blow our top, we become angry, often quickly. So sometimes we need to let off a little steam. We need to ease the tension. When we let off steam, we release feelings that we may have been avoiding. We can also say we need to blow off steam. When we blow or let off steam, we calm down or release emotions or energy by doing something we like. Like a teapot blowing off steam, it is a release of energy. So when life gets frustrating, I like to go for a walk to blow off some steam. But some people may like to yell to let off steam. For some people, blowing off steam is hard to do. They don't know how to relax or calm down. Blowing off steam can mean that we air out issues that are bothering us. 
to air out concerns is a way of easing the pressure in our steam engine. It means to discuss our thoughts openly, so we feel better. Next time you need to blow off some steam, listen to VOA Learning English and relax with an English lesson. That's all the time we have for this Words and Their Stories. Rule changes that took effect last year mean that athletes competing for American colleges and universities can make money through deals with businesses and products. Before the rule changes, an athlete could not keep an athletic scholarship or compete collegiately if they took money. But International athletes are unsure about their ability to cash in. Many foreign athletes competing in the NCAA, or National Collegiate Athletic Association, cannot earn money unless they go to their home country to do it. That includes athletes like Lou Headley. He is from Australia. Headley is a kicker, on the football team at the University of Miami in Florida. Many of the players on Headley's team are making money by doing things like promoting products on their Instagram accounts. That money comes their way thanks to a 2021 decision by the U.S. Supreme Court. It permitted college students to use their name, image, and likeness, also called NIL, to earn money. Headley is attending college in the U.S. on a special student visa known as F-1. People on student visas are not permitted to make money while attending school in the U.S. Observers, however say there is still a way for Headley to earn money. They say foreign athletes can travel to their home country and do things like take photos and record videos that can be used to sell a product. So Headley took the long flight home to Australia. He did not say exactly how much money he expects to make, but noted the amount is similar to what his teammates earn. The teammates have said they make about $50,000. It's a pain, he said, speaking of the long trip home, but it's all worth it. Headley recorded videos and took photos for a company called Life Wallet, a healthcare information company run by a Miami sports fan. Headley said, I deserve to get a little bit of money because of his efforts on the football team over the last two years. He said he did not break any of the rules. He gets paid in Australian money and did not sign any documents until he made it home. Foreign athletes in other college sports are following Headley's example. They include Mustafa Amzil, who is from Finland. He plays basketball at the University of Dayton in Ohio. He recently said he will be looking for work opportunities when he is in Finland this year to play games with his national team. Some foreign college athletes, however, are not as sure about cashing in on their fame. They are worried that taking money for talking about products might cause their visa to be canceled. That is because the rules about NIL deals are not clear for foreign students. Schools including Drexel University in Pennsylvania and West Virginia University have asked their foreign students to stay away from NIL deals for now. 
There is a ton of ambiguity, said Casey Floyd. He is co-founder of No Cap Sports, a company that helps students find NIL deals. He said the rules should be clearer. But other schools, like the University of Nebraska, are not waiting. Australians Jazz Shelley and Isabel Bourne both play on Nebraska's women's basketball team. As soon as Shelley and Bourne arrived in Australia recently, the university tweeted, International NIL made possible. Administrators at the University of Florida told their athletes to be sure they could prove they were in their home countries if they signed any documents that resulted in money. They were told, for example, to make sure their passports got stamped. Sarah Loicano is a spokesperson for the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. She said the U.S. student an exchange visitor program, which permits the international students to come on visas, continues to assess the NIL issue. One athlete who would like to see the questions answered quickly is Oscar Shibwe of the Democratic Republic of Congo. He is a basketball player at the University of Kentucky. Shibwe won the sport's Best Player Award last season. Instead of choosing to leave school this summer to become a professional basketball player, he said he would go back to school this autumn. If he is permitted to make money from an NIL deal, he could bring in over $1 million. Shibwe recently met with Mitch McConnell, one of the most powerful U.S. senators. McConnell, a Republican, represents Kentucky. Shibwe discussed the problem international students face with the visa rules. The F-1 visa traditionally keeps foreign students from doing anything but schoolwork. If that changes, however... It may make coming to the U.S. more appealing for many young international athletes. I'm Dan Friedel. And I'm Faith Perlow. Most gardeners know this story. They have planted beautiful gardens and they are happy to see helpful insects like bees and butterflies surrounding the flowers. But as they take a closer look, the tomato plants are covered in black dots and filled with harmful insects like aphids. Some gardeners may immediately reach for chemicals like pesticide, but this is not wise. Although it may stop the aphid problem, it will also threaten bees and butterflies. They help plants reproduce and keep harmful insects or pests under control. Instead, take a series of small steps to control the harmful insects. The process starts with the idea that having some pests is acceptable. Only when there are too many pests should a pest control be considered. The first defense should always be the safest method available. Also remember that helpful insects like butterflies start out as caterpillars, and all caterpillars eat plants. So, some plants will have at least some holes, which is good for the ecosystem. But how do you deal with the aphids on tomato plants? You want to wash aphids off with a strong current of water. 
it usually works. But if they continue to return after several attempts, and you believe it is time to take stronger actions, take another small step. In this case, the next step would be to use a pest control called insecticidal soap. It is non-toxic and safe for people, helpful insects when dry, and most plants. Make sure your plant is not one of the few that is sensitive to the product. As a rule, prevention is the best treatment. Inspect plants closely, including under their leaves, before bringing them home from the store. Do not bring any home that show signs of disease or the presence of harmful insects. When planting, space plants out to permit them to grow to their full size. Plants too close together can grow harmful organisms like mold, mildew, and fungus. Keep your garden clear of fallen leaves, fruit, and other waste. They invite insects and other harmful pests, if permitted, to remain on the ground. When you do see pests like aphids, wash them away. Use rubbing alcohol for removing some insects or pick them off the plants. Traps can be used to capture insects like slugs. If you decide a pesticide is necessary, choose it carefully and follow the directions and warnings on the product. Avoid using any pesticides in extreme heat, on windy days, or when plants are wet. Treat the plants early in the morning or at night when helpful insects like bees and butterflies are inactive. It might hurt, but consider removing flowers from the plant to lessen the risk that helpful insects will come in contact with the pesticide. In most cases, more flowers will come. Pesticides like insecticidal soap and horticultural oil work by suffocating pests rather than poisoning. They must come in direct contact with the pests, and they become safe for helpful insects once they have dried. The European Space Agency, or ESA, recently released detailed information on almost 2 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. The data is being collected in an effort to create the most complete map yet of our galaxy. The data was gathered from ESA's Gaia Space Observatory. Astronomers hope to use the data to better understand how stars are born and die, and how the Milky Way has changed over billions of years. The data includes new information like the age, size, temperature, and chemical properties of stars. This information can be used, for example, to find out which stars were born in another galaxy and then moved to the Milky Way. This is an incredible gold mine for astronomy said Antonella Valinari. She helped lead a group of 450 scientists and engineers. They spent years turning the measurements collected by the Space Observatory into information that can be used. Gaia was also able to find more than 100,000 starquakes. ESA compared starquakes to large tsunamis that go across stars. They appear to make the star's brightness change for a very short period of time. The events let scientists measure the star's density, interior rotation, and inside temperature, said astrophysicist Connie Arts. 
The scientists have only collected information on about 1% of the Milky Way's stars. But the Gaia mission is already providing enough information for about 1,600 scientific publications a year. Project scientist Timo Prusti said the large number of stars observed makes it more likely that scientists will make discoveries. You have to observe a lot of objects in order to get the needle in the haystack, he said. Joseph Ashbacher is head of ESA. He said the new data permits astronomers to understand forces in the galaxy. For example, it could show how our own solar system is moving inside the Milky Way. It is enabling things that would never be possible without this large number of data, he said. The Gaia data now being released also includes information on 800,000 binary stars, which are stars in orbit around another star. There is also data on several new planets outside the solar system, hundreds of thousands of asteroids in the solar system, and millions of objects beyond our galaxy. And that's our program for today. Listen again tomorrow to learn English through stories from around the world. I'm Dan Novak.